What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today, in this video, we are going to make scrambled eggs. We are actually gonna make three different kinds of scrambled eggs. I love eggs. I think they're one of the greatest things in the entire world. You can do so many different kinds of things with them. Scrambled eggs is one of my favorite breakfasts, not only because it tastes great, because there are so many different ways that you can come up with a really great meal. So let's jump in the, in the kitchen and try and make scrambled eggs three different ways. All right, we're in the kitchen. We are going to start off with that guy on the internet who likes to yell at people. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? An idiot sandwich, Chef Ramsay. That's right, Gordon Ramsay. He's got maybe one of the most famous scrambled egg recipes on the internet. So let's try and make it. We're gonna start with Gordon Ramsay's uh, scrambled eggs, which we're gonna use a pot or a saucepan as opposed to a frying pan. So let's get going. We're gonna crack our eggs right into the saucepan. And so I'm gonna use three eggs, add our butter. Then we're gonna turn on the heat. There's some differences, different videos that Gordon has that do different levels of heat. Sometimes he says 75%, sometimes he says high heat. Um, there was one I saw that said medium heat. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. This burner I have is pretty hot. So I'm gonna set it to six to start off with, and then we'll get into the technique that Gordon uses to control the heat. What's important here is we haven't whisked the eggs. We're gonna use a rubber spatula and basically start stirring the eggs. You can already see the eggs are starting to cook. So the key is to keep stirring and then as the eggs get hot to control the heat, we're just going to remove the heat from the pan while continuing to stir. You can already see this is starting to come together. We're starting to get something that resembles scrambled eggs. About 30 seconds on, 10 seconds or so off, and then back on the heat. With scrambled eggs, what's gonna happen is the residual heat from here is going to keep cooking this. So you're gonna wanna take it off less cooked than you think the final product is gonna be. This is almost done. I'm gonna do one more sort of 30 second. I might do a little bit less because these are almost done. Okay, and then off the heat. Turn this off. Now we're gonna put in just a scoop of creme fraiche or sour cream. This is going to basically stop the cooking process and add a bit of richness to our eggs. And then the very last thing I'm gonna do is season these. A bit of uh, salt, a few turns of fresh pepper, combine that, and then I'm gonna do a handful of chives. All right, let's plate these up. So nothing too fancy, just a piece of bread so we can taste the eggs and compare each of them. These on that piece of toast. All right, let's give them a try. They're really, really good. They're, they're sort of light and fluffy. Let's try another bite. Simple, they're really creamy and rich. The chives are, you know, a really nice touch, one of my favorite um, herbs to go on, to go on eggs. And simple, I think once you learn how to master taking it off the heat, adding it to the heat, um, and not overcooking it because of that. It's a really, really great and easy way in I think about three minutes to make scrambled eggs. So this is Gordon Ramsay scrambled eggs. So with our second recipe, we are going to tap the brain of Kenji Lopez-Alt, who does some fantastic work on his YouTube channel. And this recipe, again, is going to be a really, really fast uh, scrambled egg, but it has a little bit of a twist to it. So let's try and make it. So this recipe is a little less traditional and is going to challenge some of our assumptions around scrambled eggs. Um, we are going to use a bit of cornstarch. You make a slurry, basically cornstarch and, and water, and then we're going to cook our eggs in that. Apparently, that is going to give us more leeway, and even if we overcook our eggs slightly, they're still going to stay really tender and light and M-O-I-S-T. I don't like saying that word. So let's give this one a try. A little bit of cornstarch, about a teaspoon or so. Then a little bit of water, about a tablespoon or so. We're just gonna whisk this two combined. Whisk it, whisk. So we're gonna crack our eggs right into this slurry mixture we've just made. Whisk all this together. Right into the bowl, we're adding our cubes of butter. And then Kenji's a believer that you can season this right away. So let's add some salt. And a few turns of black pepper. And let's whisk again. 
Let's go over to our stove. Kenji uses the low and slow technique. So we're gonna go to medium low on our uh, temperature gauge here. And the other thing that he does that's interesting is he puts about a tablespoon of water into your pan and waits for that to evaporate so that you basically know when it's ready to use. All right, our water is mostly evaporated. Let's add some butter. We'll just give this a swirl so it's coating the pan. Okay, so it's started to foam and the foam is subsiding, which means we are ready for our eggs. Just moving all along, we are going to cook our eggs and cook them like before, a little less than we want to because they are going to continue to cook in the pan. All right, these look pretty good. That only took about a minute or 90 seconds, really. Let's take them off. All right, like before, piece of toast and add our eggs. Put some chives on top, make it look pretty. And let's give these ones a try. Really different than the, the first ones we made. They're, um, I guess less fluffy is sort of how you would say it. They're less creamy. Uh, these have a lot less butter in them and there isn't the creme fresh cream addition at the end, but they are really M-O-I-S-T because cornstarch thing really does seem to work. It's really interesting how, you know, even though I might've overcooked these slightly, especially compared to the last ones, you know, they're, they're still really, really tasty. I think these look a little more like sort of the typical North American scrambled eggs that I was used to growing up. Whereas the, um, the Gordon Ramsay ones are sort of a more of a French, French type of style. Uh, let's move on to our third one. Last but not least, we are going to get really chefy. This is going to have a bunch of different ingredients. It's gonna take a long time to make this recipe, but it comes from one of the best chefs in the world. He had the best restaurant in the world for a while. This is Heston Blumenthal's scrambled eggs. Let's give it a try. So this recipe doesn't even start with eggs. We're gonna start making brown butter, which is used as a garnish. A little too dirty. Making brown butter is, is pretty easy, but you have to be pretty careful. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some unsalted butter um, over medium-ish heat, medium-low heat. We're basically gonna cook out all the water and then lightly toast the butter. It turns brown, sort of like a piece of toast would. The key though is to not turn this into black butter, uh, which is, isn't gonna taste very good at all. It's basically burnt butter. So let's get started on this. Our butter. I'm gonna start at about medium and keep an eye on it. We're just gonna whisk this as it starts to melt, mostly just so we can keep an eye on the temperature. And if we need to take it off, sort of to cool it down, we'll be able to do that. What's gonna happen is it's gonna start to foam sort of as it's doing now. And that foam is gonna subside. And that's a lot of the water coming out of the butter. And as the water all cooks out, then the butter has the opportunity to brown and caramelize. All right, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna take this aside. I'm gonna use a coffee filter and a heat proof jar to store the brown butter until we're ready to use it. And so as this filters through here, all of the excess sort of milk solids or any sort of imperfections or impurities in the butter are going to be caught by the filter and we're gonna be left with some delicious brown butter. So we'll set this aside and then let's start on our eggs. So what we've got started here is a double boiler or a bain marie, which is a really soft way of cooking things. It's water that we're gonna bring up to a simmer or to a light simmer. And then over top of that water, we're gonna put this bowl, a heat proof bowl, which is gonna have our eggs in it and cook the eggs that way. This is going to very, very gently cook our eggs. This is gonna take 15 minutes or so. It's gonna depend a little bit on how many eggs we end up putting in here. It should give us some really, really tasty eggs. So this is about to come up to a simmer. Let's get our egg mixture ready. A little bit of heavy cream, a little bit of milk, a little bit of butter, and a pinch of salt. Let's mix all this together. Okay, and then with the water just very lightly simmering, we're going to put this bowl right on top. Then using our spatula, we're just going to slowly cook the eggs 
the heat source from underneath, you can see the steam coming up, is slowly heating our eggs. This is going to be the slowest method that we've used, but just keep stirring it, and slowly but surely the eggs will start to cook. A few moments later. These have been going for about 10 minutes or so. You can see they're starting to form some solid parts, some scrambled eggs, uh, but they are still very much a soup at this point. This is gonna happen relatively quickly. You can start to see it's starting to come together, but we still have a little ways to go. So it's right about minute 13 and we are really starting to make some progress. These are starting to come together into sort of the traditional scrambled egg texture. You know, I can see down at the bottom, things are really starting to heat up. So I have to move it around a fair bit more, but I think in just a couple of minutes, we are going to be done. Yeah, you can see this is already starting to look like scrambled eggs. We're at about 14 minutes right now. So let's take these off and set up our plate. So our toast again, add our scrambled eggs, a few drops of our brown butter. And then this is really buttery and creamy, so a little bit of sherry vinegar will help balance things out and cut through some of that richness. All right, let's give this one a try. Oh wow, those are those are really really good. They're so much different than the than the first two. Actually, all three are are really really different. You can even just see by looking at these sort of how they've come together, sort of similar to the to the first one, but you know, they're much smoother and obviously there's cream and milk in this as opposed to the other ones, which we're mostly just using butter. You're really getting that flavor of all of that fat that's in here. The, these definitely taste the richest. And I can't quite put my finger on what makes these um, taste so soft. I guess it's sort of cooking them in that really low and slow, taking the 14 or 15 minutes that it, that it took these. It really is worth it. These are, really, really good. I don't know which one is my favorite of the three. They're all really different. If you've had a chance to try any of these, uh, you know, jump it down in the comments and let me know uh, which one you like, or if there's other ones out there that I didn't make today, let me know about those. But that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you get a chance to try one of these great scrambled egg dishes. Um, and we'll see you next time. Super good.